What's the test case? Um, it's a set of actions executed to verify that fe um, feature or functionality of the so software works um, as it should. Um, it, it can be a little bit tricky because, so the test case is the smallest one. So for example, um, if you take, um, as an example, something very simple, um, something very, very, very simple, uh, like say, let's say um, a cup, right? So, I mean, what can be simpler than that, right? It's actually not that simple. So first of all, um, if you are a manufacturer of those things, then every cup, it actually should hold certain amount uh, of volume, right? That would be your one test case to check the volume. Then the second one, it could be like colors of that cup, right? Uh, the next one could be like if it, uh, uh, the material or whatever is made of. The fourth one could be like, is it capable to hold, for example, hot water or it's only for cold water, right? So you can actually come, come up with quite a few test cases just for, for something like very simple. And the same thing, uh, and we're gonna talk about like in a, in a second, the same thing applies to the web websites. So the website usually is pretty big. And if you start breaking it down to smaller pieces like pages and then to elements, even like a single element can have like quite a few test cases. Well, we're gonna cover that as a part of regression, but uh, for today, you just need to understand that the test case, whatever it is, we're checking some some functionality or some some feature, and um, so basically, when we collect all of those test cases, we're building this uh, test suites, and that uh, that test suite will basically clarify like what needs to be done to test the system. So, one by one, piece by piece, uh, baby steps, right? The, those tiny ones that they add up. Uh, and that's how we can uh, test something, something big, like eat elephant, right? Piece by piece. All right, um, so what are the parts of test cases? Interesting thing on the right uh, side, you can see this image and those poor people, they write test cases in Excel spreadsheet, I hope you guys will never, well, you will never get to that company who does that in, in Tesco, in, in uh, Excel, it's horrible. Um, but you never know. Anyways, um, so we have, I would say, two major parts of it. So since test case is uh, considered to be a documentation, you, as a, any documentation, first of all, you need to write it, right? So at the moment of writing it, you will need to um, say uh, like preconditions. Uh, well, there is a browser in, in the operating system. I would say maybe not the browser in the operating system, but um, like lay the layout. So for example, if you open any application, web application in your mobile uh, device, and then the same uh, go to any website, uh, even like Amazon or eBay, on desktop, because of the size of the screen, you are going to see different applications actually. And they can be very different from each other. So some of the, um, some of the features can be missing and some of the features, um, usually they're missing on um, like mobile devices because um, it's just a smaller screen and it doesn't fit really much but on desktop devices, you usually see like whole bunch of like everything, all those images, buttons, like menu that you can see on mobile. It's usually uh, like hamburger menu, it's called, right? There's three, um, three lines. When you click on it, it will actually open up like the whole menu on your screen. But on desktop, usually those menus are already visible, right? 
So that's why it's important because some of the features will be not really consisting across the, the, the platforms or, or your like, uh, like mobile desktop. And then there are actually four of them. So I'm not gonna go too much uh, into details, but that can be a real bummer sometimes. Okay, uh, just make sure you can account for that. So what else? Preconditions. Um, steps, uh, some data and expected results. We're gonna go one by one uh, in a second. So I'm gonna explain what are those. Uh, and, um, but the second one is execution time. So you write it and at the moment you're writing, you need to uh, specify all of those things. But at the moment of execution, it's like, um, it's actual check. So you kind of have a template. Now you need to go one by one and do like check, 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 check. Like uh, for example, um, if you're, um, if you let's say sell your car to a dealership, they do like 200 point inspection, something like that, right? So you, you can say that every single one of them uh, because it's written, they have this document already written. So they wrote those test cases, but then then take your car and just go one by one brakes. Do they work fine? Uh, like uh, pressure, like uh, is there like enough like liquid? What about brake pads and all that? And they say, okay, brakes are fine. They, they do check like, which is pass fail marker, right? So if it's checked, then it passed. If it's failed, then and it's failed. And they would say like a comment, they will leave a comment like, okay, not enough, uh, like brake pads should be replaced, for example, right? So basically because of that, we will, it will kind of fail the whole, the whole test, right? Okay, for us, it's very nice that because we use Jira, which is um, software development, uh, software, um, software development tool, tracking tool and Zephyr, which is, uh, which is, I'm gonna show you in a second, we can actually create defects. Basically, it's a connection between test case and defects. So for example, if your test case failed, if something is wrong, you can uh, immediately create a defect and it will pick up like all those steps and everything. So you can really modify it a little bit and uh, it will be locked automatically. So you don't even have to like write all of those steps down because it's already, it will come, it will pull it from, from your test case really. Uh, 